Debt Ceiling Cinema. If you feel like you've seen this movie before, you're not wrong. The big question is, is debt now irrelevant? It might sound crazy to think about, but in a world of near zero interest rates, does debt even matter anymore? Right now in Washington, D.C., politicians are squabbling over the debt ceiling. Should the debt ceiling rise or not? If there's no agreement, theoretically speaking, the U.S. government could run out of money by the end of the month. Look, we all know that's not going to happen. It would lead to immediate credit downgrades, if it did, and in missed payments by the U.S. government. Could you imagine the carnage? The chart you're looking at would show what would happen by Halloween. Will it happen? Not a chance. Really, though, all this talk about the debt ceiling is just political posturing. We all know it's going to go up. Because, let's be real, there are two things politicians love. Spending money they don't have, which means debt, and spending taxpayer dollars, your money. Most of Washington couldn't hold a candle to the Wall Street fixed income departments when it comes to managing debt finance, but that's besides the point. The debt ceiling in the U.S. and around the world will continue to trudge higher, and why not? At today's ultra-low interest rates, the cost of funding the debt is near all-time lows. The chart you're looking at shows the relationship between the federal fund's interest rate, the budget deficit to GDP, and net interest payments relative to GDP. So that's the key question here is how much does it cost to service the debt? As you can see, the substantial decline in interest rates outweighs the extra debt taken on to stimulate the economy. Budget deficits are going up, but the cost of funding that deficit is going down. It's all about interest rates. Get stimulated. One would think that having enormous amounts of cheap capital in the system would create a highly stimulative economic environment. And we all know a picture is worth a thousand words. The chart shows current and future net interest payments as a share of GDP. It's forecast that over the next five years, net interest payments as a share of GDP will be some of the lowest ever on record. And from a politician standpoint, that means more room for debt. More debt. As GDP recovers and trudges higher post-coronavirus, interest payments remain low thanks to ultra-low rates. This allows the government increased financial flexibility and spending power if they so choose, and we know they will. Big but cheap. That's the chart you're looking at right now. However, both you and I know that there's no such thing as a free lunch. Eventually, the chickens will come home to roost. Debt to GDP is one metric to watch. As we saw in the previous chart, by 2030, interest payments are forecast to be back at 3% of GDP, the same level it was in the late 80s and early 90s. A central bank buys bonds from the government to inject capital into the system. And when the economy begins to overheat, it sells bonds to pull money out of the system. In September, the U.S. Federal Reserve outlined its plans for tapering its bond purchases. This means the Fed will begin to slowly rein in the amount of capital it's injecting into the system. This type of policy is still considered highly accommodative, but the world we now live in is used to extreme amounts of financial heroin. I call it FTDs, financially transmitted diseases. It's not just that the U.S. that has such accommodative policies in place either. Europe, Japan, Canada, Australia, and of course China are all running highly expansionary policies. These accommodative policies are fanning the flames of a global economy that's rapidly transitioning away from undercapacity to overheating. Commodities heating up and crossflation. Last week, we showed you how natural gas and coal prices are skyrocketing. Ditto for uranium. Real-time data analysis using commodity prices or food inflation points a far more drastic inflation picture. After all, commodities are the backbone of everything we build and consume on a daily basis. What you're looking at right now is the Bloomberg Commodities Index, and it's just reached all-time highs. I don't know how often Jerome Powell or Janet Yellen go grocery shopping themselves, but if they do, they'll notice the prices have gone up a lot. It's simple math that if the prices of inputs go up, 
some or all of that cost is going to eventually get passed on to the consumer. And here's a chart, the IMF, the International Monetary Fund's World Price Food Index. As you can see, post-pandemic, the index is up 40%. These high input costs, which translate directly to higher food prices, are impacting the consumer's bottom line. The following chart shows the price of chicken in the United States, up 20% since the pandemic. A true story. I asked my local butcher why they didn't have any beef tenderloin the other day. His response? We stopped carrying it because it's so expensive that no one is buying it. In my book, The Rise of America, Remaking the World Order, I wrote about crossflation. It's a term I coined to describe how some parts of the economy would see inflationary pressures while others would see deflationary pressures. Technology continues to play a deflationary role, while input costs such as oil drive up the price of all commodities, which is inflationary. The global capital markets are an incredible inflection point right now. I've just sent a note to my subscribers this week on how to get in on the largest investment opportunity I've ever come across. This isn't some rinky-dink dice roll exploration play on a metal you've never heard of in some area you never want to visit. This is the biggest, most de-risked, wealth-changing opportunity I've seen in my career. There are tens of trillions of dollars being invested into the sector, but right now it's still flying under most investors' radars. If you want financial freedom, the ability to protect yourself and your loved ones, no matter where food prices or other basic commodity prices end up, consider a subscription to my KRO. Stay safe.